Good morning. Just get my box off the table. How are you? We are live. Yeah, Josh has just texted me. He's like, you're live. You're live. Yeah. Hello. Are you well? Let me find the video on Facebook. I'm getting better at this now. I am getting better. Getting better and getting better. Getting better. There we go. You see, look, live. Do, 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 do. Um, yes, yeah, so it is Stitchy Witchy Wednesday, aka Workshop Wednesday, which means that Jane will be along in just a moment. Uh, she's she's just been building. Look what she's just been building for me. Bless her. It's like what I really need to store my all my bags on <laughs> is something like this. Um, I rather like this. It's all right, isn't it, Jane? It's lovely. So uh, it just means that I can get all my bags in one place and then I can... It's very good. Very good. There we are. Um, so that's, uh, that's what Jane's been busily, busily doing for me. Uh, are you well? Did you have a good Tuesday? We're now into Wednesday. I don't know where the morning's gone already. Who knows? But we are here, we are live and we are good to go. Today's quilt is the B quilt, which obviously I've just masked with all my bags. That was a really bad idea, wasn't it? There we go. Um, is the beautiful Bill quilt. This is not ours. It's not mine. It's not Jane's. It is a lovely lady called Tracy. Uh, Tracy Perks. What a great name. That's a lovely name. Perks. I don't think you can have a bad day if your surname is Perks. Anyway, so um, she came to our attention via the lovely John Cole Morgan, so thank you very much um, to him for introducing us. She lives on a narrow boat. She is a permanent cruiser. Oh, no. Nice. Uh, which means that they're, well, in normal times, constantly on the move. They move every two weeks up and down the Grand Union Canal, I think, I believe. <laughs> um, and she lives there with her husband and a couple of dogs. And she's had... Um, I believe it was called the Dinette Dinette. Anyway, that was all ripped out and made into a dedicated sewing space for her. She actually works in HR. Oh, right. Yeah, that's her main job. But then um, a few years ago, she was asked to do a bee cushion uh, for a friend's grandchild. And this pattern was born. Um, but she did it in inch sizes. Yeah, a bit much. Tiny. So she made it then into a big quilt. And over the last year or so, she's made about five of these, either gifted or sold, and people kept asking for the pattern. So then she got her graphic designer niece to make the pattern. And the pattern is fabulous. And ta-da! Here it is. Now, this is done in Alison Glass fabrics, which we don't have. Um, it's not a current collection, I don't think. Um, so what we've got for you today is it in beautiful mode of shades. We've gone bluey greeny slightly less sort of chartreuse in ours um but i rather i just love it in whatever color way you decide to do whether you're just getting the pattern and doing your own thing or whether you're using our beautiful motors look here's the colors we did run these colors um past tracy and she was super it was one of those things wasn't it that um you see there's the bee body stuff there jane will show you all of this but here are your colors here um so we've done it in yeah as close as we could really but they just they came in the same day that we got our hands on the the quilt pattern didn't we yeah, I was like just oh all fell together didn't thank you thing. we'll have that we'll have a bit of that uh who have we got watching this morning this is a beginner make by the way just you know throwing it out there yeah. could you imagine if that is your first one where are my glasses i can't actually see anything <laughs> oh no they're not in there are they in the one by the machine well i don't know no. There's an orange one behind the bag, is that? There was an orange glasses case. Any in here? Come on. Surely one of my many, many glasses <laughs> cases has got to actually have a... Oh, look. Oh, these ones. Nice. Uh, has got to actually have a pair of glasses in it. Uh, right. Who have we got this morning? Good spot. Well done, Jane. See, if I'd have had my glasses on, I could have seen. Uh, we have got with us this morning, Moira and Sheena and Pam. Good morning. Now, I want to say Lazondre. Is that right? Because that's, that's not a name I've ever come name. across, but it's really pretty, yeah. isn't it? Oh, Lazondre. Um, and Heather and Ali, good morning. You see, I can, ma I can manage that. Uh, Gillian, good morning. And Leslie and Elizabeth, good morning. 
That's just like, good morning, lovely ladies, one and all. Good morning, Hilary. Yeah, you see, Hilary, I'm not going to try and pronounce her surname. I'm really not very good at names. Um, anything that generally ends in Owski, I, I struggle with. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. But then you see, people struggle with my surname. Brandon always calls me McCarthy, uh, McCarthy, and I'm not on McCarthy. Yeah. Yeah. Morning, April. Hello, Kate. Good morning, Lorraine. Good morning, Laurie. Uh, good morning, Nikki. Good morning. Oh, yeah, April loves the bee quilt. Morning, Claire. Are you feeling any better, Claire, by the way? You've got a right old to do, haven't you? Bless you. Uh, Margaret and Sheena and John. Good morning. And Trudy as well. We're all here. And Ali, Ali G's watching. And Steph and Lorraine. Good morning. Good morning. And Lisa, she says, wow. Oh, amazing. Um, good morning, says Grace. Everybody, a uh, beautiful day and pattern. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Pam says, I love the humble bumblebee. You can't call it humble. It's the, it, it, We would not be here if it was not for the bee. We wouldn't. No. Fact. We would not no. be here if it We'd was not no for the food. bee. There is nothing humble about it. It is. We should be, we should be, well, uh, worshipping it. Uh, morning from a, a sunny North Yorkshire here on holiday. Susan, there's a word that you don't hear very often, isn't it? Holiday. Holiday. Hol what is this thing you speak of? Uh, morning, Heidi. Morning, Leslie. Morning, um, Penny. Oh, 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 oh. Penny's been ordering uh, a jukey. Good, 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 good. Um, low. Oh, you're in Kings Lynn on our way to don't know where yet. Oh, we'll soon find out, won't we? Uh, have a lovely time. Right, do you want to see? I've got a few things for you today. Something to bear in mind. I'm just going to move this, yeah, Jane. Sorry. Uh, should um, I shouldn't be there. <laughs> no, be. Uh, I am going to show you the half, half meter heavens ready for tomorrow. They will go live at midnight. So if you are new to us, every week we put together two half meters. It'll be a pattern, a designer pattern and a plane. And at midnight tonight, they go live and they are just 9 99 for the pair. So you're getting a whole meter of fabric for just 9 99 which I think is a pretty good deal. And it's always top designers and stuff like that in there. Um, it might be that it's an end of bolt, um, something left over from a project where we just didn't quite need it all. Um, or just I had a dig around and found I often like to dig around and find stuff. Uh, so we've got those to show you. And then, and then, and then, um, Gemma's just loading some beautiful art gallery fabric 10 yard boxes. They're just gorgeous. Oh, <laughs> I wanted them all. Oh, yeah. So here's the thing. Not only are they already, I think, six pounds off each box. Oh, wow. Which is nearly a yard in itself. But if you're spending over £100 today, which is easy to do by the time that you've got a quilt in a box, um, then, 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 um, yeah, take, if you use the code 10 off 100, um, and that's 10 in letters off, O -F -F, F 100, then we'll give you £10 off. It's all right, isn't it? Bargain. Well, we just like Very to help nice you, you on your way. It's, you know, well, it's getting towards the end of the month, isn't it? You know, this is true. Where's it gone? We like to help wherever we can. Talking of helping, thank you for photographing all these this morning. It was a pleasure. I was out with the pleasure. fencing man, you know, living the dream. It's hardship, <laughs> you know, stroking all that gorgeous fabric. <laughs> I had already cut it, to be fair. I did cut it this morning. So, do you want to see it? What have we got? Um, some of these I've only got like twos and threes of. Yes, it's that quite. situation again. You're going to have to be quick. We're all right on the cave. So, oh, so this is, this is slightly unusual because um, when this chambray came in, with this I solely dedicated to a to a bolt of cave. This is now left over um, from a show I did a little while ago on Ho Chanda. These made the great stowaway bags. They were absolutely perfect for the stowaway bag. And this denim-y look on the chambray just went so beautifully with the octopus. But here's the thing. It is a half meter in width, but this is, of course, a dressmaking fabric. It's it wider. is cotton. Yeah. Um, so you get a bit more. You do get a little bit more with this. And these have proved very popular in the past when we've popped that out. Now, is Tilda. That, the one that, that uh, Freddie's got as his swimming bag? Yes. He does, not that he's going swimming anywhere anytime no. soon, but he does have this one as a swimming bag and it's just fab. Yeah. 
he absolutely loves it. So he's got it as his lunch bag at the moment, along with, actually, he nicked one of mine today. His <gasps> lunch. Oh, he nicked a cave bag. <laughs> so rude. Oh, all right, <laughs> there. All right there, kiddies. We've only got six of these. Um, these were left over from those beautiful cushions that you did, but I've paired it with a Jane, uh, with a Jade. You're you can a Jane. pair it with me if you like. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, so, which is just beautiful with it. It really picks out. It did. I went on a photographing it I did was you like, stroke oh, it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is the, the last of the tilda billy joe i always want to call it billy jean but it's not no it's, d it's d the eerie, isn't it? yeah um and that's it six of those and they are gone 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 i don't even know if i can get that fabric anymore tilda's quite hard to come by at the moment i'm really struggling with it um but they having said that, that way aren't they There's yeah no fabric, so. the um Tilda subscriptions are all good and ready to go, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They're all bagged up, boxed up, cut and everything. We've got two of these. This is what I mean. We've got like two of things. This is your Liberty Bells, your silver Liberty Bells. I've put it with a cadet blue. Really makes those blue flowers pop. Doesn't, doesn't it? it? Doesn't it? I'm, I'm whizzing through these a little bit. Just Shall I do these on a close-up? Would that be easier for everybody? Just so that you can really get a good idea. There, yeah, there's the mini beast. Uh, so there we go. You've got such a pretty fabric it just picks it up doesn't it but like i say i've only got two so when these go live at uh, midnight i imagine that there will be a mad dash for it when we last again we've got two of these and again this is another liberty when we did this before we did it with was it pomegranate or raspberry we did it with a stronger pink but actually i quite like it with the that's softer really pink. delicate it yeah. is isn't it and again two of those that's it i've got three of these so this is your animal uh no no this is your stripe sorry i always want to say it's an animal it doesn't it's look not, a bit like yeah. print, doesn't it no it's not it is your um it's your stream in magenta i believe and what have i put it with today i have put it with pomegranate lovely because i wanted to pick out that which i think i've done quite well I'm going to give myself a little pat on the back there. Um, now, the Wistit, let's, hang on, I'm going to put this on here because, 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 because. Oh, we love the Wisteria. I do love the Wisteria. And again, I've only got a handful of these. I'm but going to confess to you that when I put those out to photograph, I was like, hmm, I'm not sure about that blue with that. And then I photographed it and I was like, oh, I see why Then now. you put it <laughs> next to it, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> This was one of those things. I was looking for this blue, but actually I went a tone darker and I went with the sapphire. And it actually makes the background colour really pop. Really pop. Yeah, you see, normally I try and pick a colour and find that colour and pull yeah. that colour out. But in this case, the orange next to the sapphire is divine, just divine. Uh, and it just and then it brings this blue out but if I'd have matched it with exactly that blue I don't think it would have done anything mm -mm, would it? it wouldn't it wouldn't have been quite so kapow and that's what I'm getting here Jane I'm getting kapow there's definitely I, a kapow with that one I did want I've got seven of those I did wonder if um what what your take would be on that when I cut it I was like mm. Um, now this one, I'm going to show you this on a, on a close up because again, this is a Liberty one and I've got three of these, but look, 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 look how that salt batik picks out that bluey grey in there, Perfect. Colour. which it's is a not a colour that you normally see in there. Normally you see the, the goldy chartreuse colour or the raspberry pink. I was like, hang on a minute, there is a really delicate bluey grey in there. And this is, I think we've only got a handful of these um, salt batiks left, but it just gives that delicate, soft finish that we want. But literally three, and they're gone. Uh, now, <laughs> I don't think that really needs much discussion, does it? It's just lush. It's Philip Jacobs for the K-Facet Collective. It's his melons. It's lovely, that one. I love the colour combination. Just melons. Now, some of you, if you've got the cave subscriptions, then some of you will have seen some of these. Some of you had this in your cave subscriptions. Um, oh, now, let's talk about this. It's our oh. new favourite Dina Designs. No, it's no. not. It's Anna Maria Horner, would oh, you believe? Oh, well, that explains it. But I had to pick out that orange, and this is the last of it. It's lovely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've uh, literally a handful left and that's then gone. Um, 
oh now I did manage to pick out the blue in this again this is your K facet collective this is enchanted doesn't that blue pop works beautifully Maybe doesn't really it set the oranges off that's with sky would you believe and then luscious with lavender ding 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 ding, ding. Hmm? yeah I pulled that lavender out it's really rich that is it's just gorgeous fabric it is very very beautiful um now then now then three sisters this is one of my i absolutely it's so romantic this one and i wanted to because look at these pinks here i've put it with a blush yes it would be very tempting to put that with a misty blue wouldn't it we have before colours, but i think we have um, it beautiful. and i was also tempted to put it with a cream as well cream would have been lovely or an ivory yeah but actually i pulled out that blush pink because it was just oh, beautiful beautifully beautiful and again i've got five of those so really not very many going on As keeping with the blush this is dina designs and again just a handful of those left I would throw in a half meter of um, of ivory with that as well, you know, Jane. Yes. And beautiful. then you've got a, a meter and a half of fabric, and That's that so would just be beautiful. Is. Those three together, lots you could play with there. Uh, now then, this is your glow in the dark, Lewis and Irene glow in the dark. So all of these glow, but the ivory just set off that pink. It's sundown pink such a pretty pink it's such a pretty pink and then when it's not glowing it picks out the glowy bits so it's always going to glow yeah love that only a handful of those now this is a new one we've not had this before this is by amy cinebaldi it's an art gallery fabrics one um anna sewing that this made me think of you that's funny because I was thinking the same thing. Did you? Yes, I Did like, you? I was like, oh, I think I know someone who might like this. I don't know if she's watching today. Um, and I found that pink. I picked out that pink because there's enough of a gap with the cream and everything else that it's not overkill with the pink. No, it's just nice. Just sets it off lovely. Yeah. Do you want to see that from afar? Let me show you that from afar. We've got a friend that's into music or plays a musical instrument that would make a lovely bag. Who has say? a musical vent. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you could make a nice little tote to keep their music in. Yeah. <coughs> now. Now, now. Now, 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 Jane. <laughs> you love this fabric. I heart this. Very, I'm going to spin that around so you're not looking at the label. Uh, this is the border print. And you've got little fairies and things like this. Now, I thought this would have been nice for the bed tidy. Yes, that would work really nicely, wouldn't um, it? Especially if you then use clear plastic for the pockets. Yeah. I thought that would have been absolutely gorgeous. And especially if you use the sparkle PU. Oh, yeah, really pretty. Yeah. So I left a few units that you can buy by the half meter. There are a few. So if you do want to go in and do the bed tidy, get a meter. Otherwise, I went in, Jane, with our friend Misty Blue. Yeah, it works perfectly. Because otherwise, then you see these, you see the thistle. I hadn't noticed the thistles before. I hadn't noticed all these different things in that. I hadn't noticed. And of course, it's a double border. So you've got exactly the same. Pow! On the other side. Beautiful. But again, I did leave. I did leave a few units of that up because I bought a lot of that. And it has been very popular. But we've got a little bit left. I've only got four units of this. But check this out. Oh, this is, um, again, this is from Lewis and Irene. I'm just going to show you this on a close-up because how beautifully does that work with the last of the grey salt batik? It's perfect, isn't it? Because it's because the salt batik's got that little mottled effect to it. It just it sets it just off really nicely. See, normally I go for a contrast, no, but, but today I went for something. And I did exactly the same with the light, uh, with the cream and linen. I put it with a light grey, which suddenly doesn't look grey. No, it doesn't look grey, does it at all? Pinkiness to it. Which yeah, is I did look at putting it with a pink. <laughs> yeah, it's not pink at all, but it does. It gives you that sort of I don't mm. know, sort of a. There are like only three of them anyway. 
raw plaster kind of feel to it. Yeah. Sort of soft. It is soft. It is soft. Um, so they are the half meter heavens that will go live tonight at midnight. And then, <laughs> just you wet old chain. These are the designer oh, ones. Oh, these are the designer ones. I went shopping. <laughs> Look what I came home with. So we toyed with what was the best way for you to get these and that's when we came up with a spend £100, get £10 off, which means that you can get a couple and it, you know, there's a lot, a lot going on in here. Let me show you um, what. So if you've never played with art gallery fabrics before, these are just beautiful. Um, and I, oh no, this is where I can't get into them, isn't it, Jane? And I always have a little problem with this. Um, so I'm not going to take them all out. I will just... Oh, there we go. But this is what you can expect when you get them home. They are all beautifully put. These are yards, half yards. Look, ten half yards. Ten half yards. So five yards of fabric. Were well, these the design? No, these are the colour masters. They're the designer ones. They're the designers one, yeah. right. So this is... Gemma said it, said it on it. Yes, it's like the, if you look on the back there. Oh, Pat Bravo. I love Pat it Bravo. Say it on the top as well. I'm blind. Blind, I tell you. Uh, Pat Bravo, edition number one. I adore Pat Bravo stuff. But you see, you've got the colours that work all the way through. These ones I've got in front of me. Individual designers. Individual so designers. Bravo, but you'll see on the other side of the box yeah. the name of the designer. Yeah. So each of those is an individual designer. Yeah. And these ones are the colours, but mixed, mixed designers. designers. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, big fan of Pat, Pat Bravo. Uh, right, so here's my thing. I, if you have never encountered art gallery fabrics, please give them a go because. Their motto is feel the difference. <laughs> Who's this? Caroline Hulse. Ooh, oh, 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 nice. There's some beautiful colours. There are. I'm not going to open them all up because um, I don't know if I'll be able to shut them again. And I want you to get them in pristine, pristine. Um, that's a bit special. Oh, no. <laughs> they are very much my colours. So, yeah, guess who bought all these? Um, <laughs> and... Um, so the, the difference is these feel like they are halfway between a quilting weight and um, and a cotton lawn. Yeah. And that's because of the type of cotton fibres that they use. It's basically like Egyptian cotton. Yeah, it's a very close woven Very fiber. close woven. And it's... And it handles beautifully, so it it sort of translates well for dressmaking as well as yeah. quilting. They give yeah, you a yeah. beautiful finish to both. They will work across the board, but because um, uh, the texture is just so fine and so beautiful and silky to use, and that's because of the cotton fibres. They are very very long cotton fibres, like you get with Egyptian cotton. Yeah. Now, if you love. But this is April monochrome. Rhodes. Yeah, well, it's it's your navies and your um, and your mustards and golds, isn't it? Yeah, in there? Dare we say it masculine? Why? Well, yeah. I don't like to come what complementalise no. things, but you know. I don't know because, and I am going to have to open this one now because we've said it, haven't we? So. Yeah, they're not they're not your flowery flowery, are they? No. But you see, I. I like, there's a place for that. Yeah, there's well absolutely you, a place for if that. If you've got neutrally tones in your lounge, that would work beautifully, wouldn't it? would work wouldn't really it? well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you love your, nus your, your nustards, your mustards and <laughs> your, navy. your navies. That's a new colour, nustard. <laughs> and, uh, nustard. This is nustard by oh. April Reds. It's not nustard by April Reds. Um, Sharon Holland. I don't know why this has got 206 written on it, but there we go. Oh, this was the one I wanted number. to keep. Oh, is it? Yeah. Well, actually, I wanted to keep them all. It's got little butterflies, and it was this one. I was like, oh, I want that one. I want that one. Um, and then this one is Amy Cinebaldi. So this is going to go with your da -da 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 musical, notes. musical notes. 
And again, in that colourway as well. So Amy Tinnaboldi, beautiful, beautiful. Um, I know that a lot of you collect these. Anyway, let's have a look. This is Jessica Swift. I love the colours in that. What are, hang on, what are these? Little chaps. <clears throat> Swans! Oh, look. Oh, that's really sweet. Hang on, what have we got and in then here? And you've got feathers, have you, in that? Because well, you've got... What's this? Mystery animals. You've got all sorts. You've got horses, you've got hares, you've got all sorts going on there. You've got horses with the most incredible tails going on there. That's good fun. Um, I have a bit of that. You've got pineapples, you've got some sort of fish situation going on there. Love it. Some beautiful swans. Who is this? Jessica Swift. How have I not heard of her? This is lovely. Beautiful, isn't it? Really be Look at the tigers. <coughs> Excuse me. There's something a bit primal to these. I'm yeah. enjoying it tremendously. And then your pinks. And the, oh, oh, nice. Beautiful. This is where you want to um, crack out a creative grid and just use all of these colours that just work together and create something stunning. Yeah. Ah, oh, well, this is rather lovely too. This is Mr. Domestic. Oh, I love Mr. Domestic. Never follow heard. him. I'm a, I just adore him. So I tell me about Mr. Domestic. And Facebook. Do you? Yes. You little stalker. <laughs> he's oh. lovely. He does all sorts of crafts. He does knitting and crochet. And he's, well, um, he's domestic. Yeah. Look at these. But he, oh, he's got a good. really good eye for colour. He really hasn't he just? Yeah, he really Ooh. loves mixing his colours up, and he loves the rainbow. Um, these are great stash builders, and also if you are not confident about colour, then I would encourage you to get one of these. I know they're a little bit of a considered purchase. Maybe you've got a birthday or something coming up, but you know, five yards of fabric in here. That's a quilt. That's a quilt. Really, under isn't seventy it? pounds. Yeah. That will make you a quilt top, quite nice size quilt top. Of course it will. Top, yeah. Of course it will. With all the, all the colours going. And the colours are going to blend together, aren't they? And if you need help with planes, then let us know. We can always play with that. We're always help, happy to do that. Let me swap this out. Oh, they're a bit, they're a bit gorgeous. I'm going to pop these up here. And tease you with them. Oh, I found my bulldog clip yesterday. Lots of you asking. Where was it? Uh, well, I put it. Your tray. No, I I'd, <laughs> I'd shooshed it down there. I tidied. I say tidied. Put it yeah, out of no, camera shot. Yeah. In a just sweep. Sweeped it to one side. <laughs> you really do know in this studio which bit the cameras are on. <laughs> she gets yeah. that. And it's like it's out of camera shot. It's fine. Put it there. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, you... <laughs> Very tidy. Um, well, this is rather lovely. So this is where you get... Oh, there's no plastic on this one. Oh. This is where you get different um, designers. Yeah, so this is your Pima Cotton. That's what it's called. I couldn't remember what it's called. Pima Cotton. Yeah. Um, and that's what's really beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. And they are also... They're made in Korea and they're also... O Ecotex? Ocutex? I don't know. Anyway, it means they've got no nasty chemicals in them in the dyeing process. So that's really important. And if you ever want to make um, like kids' clothes or anything like that, check, make sure they are Ocutex. This is quite peachy. They've done these in colour collections. So you've got lovely value, you know, same colour palette, values, but yeah. different values of... Of and different designers. It's just it, another again, way to collect beautiful yeah, fabrics. It just they've, they've thought about it and it works together. So, you know, again, you've got the right I tried combinations to get, for a quilt. Um, I tried to get a rainbow. So then you've got your mustards. That always makes me think of Jennifer Taylor because she loves her mustards. Yeah. Um, I expect they probably called it gold. Yeah, there you go. Gold leaf edition. Gold. This one. Again, some of these don't have plastic on, which I like. Um, oh, we love the planet. Here are some suggestions to reuse this box. There we go. Great. Uh, but I do want to know what you called it. Gentle Spring. Oh, check out my gentle. That's beautiful, isn't it? So pretty. If you get this one and there's that one missing, because, <laughs> you know, 
I might have borrowed it. Uh, that's gentle spring. Oh, this one's got bunny rabbits and they're cuddling. Just saying. Rose parfait. If you've got a little one on the way that's yeah. pink yeah. flavour, this might. I saw that and I was like, oh, oh baby yeah, I know. <laughs> you just need to be a grandma, Jane. Not Glenn yet. No, I'm not ready to be a grandma. <laughs> You're not. Not no. yet. No, I'm not old enough to be a grown up. Not old enough. I'm, I'm not, not grown up enough, I should say. Uh, look at the pugs. Hang on. Oh, cute. Grumpy pug faces. Love it. I really love a grumpy looking dog. Not one that's like going to eat me. No. But, you know, yeah. like, gr I a love jowly one border that terriers. I love border terriers as well because they always just look so miserable yes. and grumpy, and like a grumpy old man, and I just adore it. Um, and then this one is called Pomegranate Tart. Lovely. So I did try and get you, I can sing a rainbow. And actually with the other ones as well, the colourways, you've got, you've got all the blues in the other one. There we go. Uh, so that was my bit of fun today. Make sure you use your code 10 off 100 and, and just save yourself a bit. We like these. They're already so these should have been seventy five ninety nine, and they're sixty nine ninety nine. That's a good bargain. It is so six ninety nine per half yard for designer designer fabric for art gallery fabrics. That's a really good. It's price. It's a really good price because they sh yeah yeah they should be a lot more. They should be a lot more peeps. Um, but you know, if you keep buying, I will keep finding all of these goodies for you. Uh, right, I'm going to get out of the way and I'm going to leave you, Jane, to do your thing. Oh, but yeah, show us a little bit of love on here. Press the little heart button if you are loving those art gallery fabrics because I am. Do, 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 do. Hello, everybody. Oh, hi. Oh, the sun's starting to peep through now. It's been quite a grey morning here so far. I drove here in the rain. I Did you? Like, What's this what? stuff falling out of the sky? What? It hasn't seen rain for ages, have we? Very dead. quite a bit of snow. Oh, there's no lots rain. of love. Lots of love for the art galleries coming through. I'm not surprised. They're beautiful. I'm going to turn that one like that. Oh, nice. Do just it. Just because I can. Do it. Don't you just love the bee? I love bees. I just love bees. Everybody knows I love bees. There's bees all over the place in my house. We Look do at the bee necklace. Oh, and I love HP. What have you done to your face? Oh, no. What has she done to her face? My looks a bit swollen. Oh, uh, she no. Did you not hear? Oh, you she weren't was. here yesterday. She had a big scrap with next door's cat. Did you? Were you fighting? Yeah. <gasps> you bad girl. Cool. And really, she shouldn't be because she's a bit old for that. No. You've got to keep your territory going, haven't you? Excuse oh, me. the Penny says that if you want to be a teenager again, be a grandma. Oh, yes. I'm looking forward to... I mean, there's no well, pressure. There's no pressure, is there? I mean, I don't want to put any pressure on anybody, but I am looking forward to the day that I may become a grandma. Just not quite... I don't think I'm ready yet, but I think... I don't think you're ever ready to be a grandma. Until I don't the, think it's your choice. No, until, <laughs> the, until the baby arrives, and then you just... Well, if you're anything like my mum, you fall head over heels, and that's it. Of course you do. Un of course inseparable you. for the rest of your lives. Ah. Yes, yeah, so we've got this gorgeous colour combination for our bee. As Natasha said, we were looking at the pattern and this delivery arrived and we went, these are the fabrics. Look at those we've chosen for the background. Shall I put them up close? Yeah, up do close it. and personal, there they are. Look at those. So they're your Moda grunges. And I've, I went with some of the seeing stars because... I think, yeah, they just add a little bit to it, don't they? Just a little bit more yeah. texture. Yeah. And then there's a little bit of just plain motor there, just a, sec a, a little section. So you've got two and a quarter of metres of, of those for your background fabrics. You've then got your plain black, which we've used obviously for the bumblebee's body. And um, Tracy bound hers in black, so we've, we've put enough to bind it in the we've black. We've honoured it, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, we've it kept it to Tracy's pattern, really. It gives it a nice full stop, yeah. I think. We've chosen the bumbleberries cream for the wings again just to give it a little bit of texture and not make the wings look too heavy because i think a plane would have been too too dense yeah that gives it a bit of pattern and texture again for the wings which is lovely and then a little bit of the yellow golden golden salt batik again just to give a little bit of texture 
For that bee body. For the bee body, because we all love a fuzzy bumblebee. So those Aww. are your fabrics, which are beautiful. <laughs> Elizabeth says that her John says that I sound like Basil Brush today with my laugh. He says, boom, boom. <laughs> Do you remember Basil Brush? I do. I love oh, Basil I love Brush. Basil Brush. I loved him. I, I take that as a compliment. Uh, Jess has a bee, gorgeous quilt, Jane. Um, yeah, it's yes, it's, it's Tracy, Tracy Tracy Perks. Perks and it's yeah. beautiful. It's a beautiful pattern. Absolutely ideal for a beginner. Because just squares. Because it's just squares and a few half square triangles in there. But Perfect. again, I'm going to show you how to do those, and we'll talk about all of the way we construct it. It's a beautiful pattern, it's concise, easy to follow, and if you're a visual person, perfect. Oh, it's great. And, and you've got like tick-off boxes, I love yeah. it. Can we go close up? Yeah, this? of course we can. You've got your front page with the beautiful picture of the actual quilt, so that helps you with colour placement and things, because if you're going to get the pattern just on your own, and not use our fabulous kit, I don't know why you wouldn't, but there you go, if you've got a stash <laughs> that you want to use. Stash? You can, you can see the colour placements. It's lovely. Then you've got your requirements, so what you need. And again, like Natasha says, there's a lovely tick box here, so you can tick them off as you get them. And there you have, you've got the pattern there, the mosaic of the bee. So that, again, gives you an idea about how much background fabric is in it and where everything goes. And then you've got your cutting instructions. And again, these are beautifully laid out. This isn't me writing on here. This is part of the pattern, which I thought was lovely. A lovely touch. And she's put little squares in there so you can tick them. So Tracy's niece has done, done good with this. Yeah, that's my writing. That's me scribbling on it. I have scribbled on it because I do that. Um, and sewing directions. So you've, you've got a half square triangle. So you need to, to do a combination of the half square triangles. Obviously, the square is slightly bigger. But again, she gives you the measurement there. You can see that for the unfinished squares for the half square triangle and then there's a, a lovely instructions for how to do the half square triangles so everything's there and then you've got the plan so on here you need 22 of your green squares for the first row and then you'll need 19 of your green squares one whole square of white and then two white and green half square triangles so it goes down and again, you've got these beautiful boxes at the side to tick so that you know exactly where you are with each one. Perfect. And that goes over two pages. And then there's a little bit here for putting your own notes in. If there's something that you've done while you've been doing it and you think, oh, I'll remember that for next time because I think this is going to be a pattern that you'll go to again and again. And you might try different colour backgrounds. Do you know, we were also saying this morning that it would be something nice to hand stitch as well. And if yes. you did want to EPP it, we've got, uh, we've got the... You've got um, your squares, have We've got you? the squares and the, yeah. and the, and the um, triangles. Yeah. So you could EPP it and, and do it with the hexaforms that we've got. Yeah. That would be phenomenal. Yeah. I'm going to go over a little bit about hand sewing just to show everybody how you could do it if you wanted to hand sew it because i just think this is the sort of thing that could be a project that you take your time over enjoy yeah. making it yeah yeah and we i project. think there's nothing nicer than sitting in the garden with a bit of hand sewing and you know what actually if you did it in tiny epp squares yes i'm going to say you can scale it down because the squares and half square triangles are yeah, they're just squares. You but if, make you, it bigger. if you've got the hexiforms yeah. and you've got the, the squares and the half square triangles, then you could make it as a cushion or you could make it as a bag front. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That would be amazing. Yeah, you could easily scale the pattern up or down. You could make it bigger if you wanted to. You could Ooh. make it smaller and make that a centre of a quilt and then add borders around it. You can do all sorts so of things. much that you can do. And with squares, it's lovely. And for a, a beginner's project, if you're just starting out with patchwork and quilting but don't want to just get a charm pack and sew it together this is nice because it gives you a a target a to aim to yeah. and something that you can see growing as you do it first is it's like a, a crochet and knit graph patterns <coughs> yes that you follow square uh, row by row yeah it's right yeah. actually isn't it yeah it is yeah you do yeah it is like a, a pattern so i'm going to go over the basics of cutting your fabric 
And I was going to bring a piece of half a half metre of fabric in, and then I haven't done it. So can I pinch a piece of half metre heaven, plain? Or have you got a... Yeah, I'm just seeing what, what well, I've got a piece knocking here. about. How much do you need? Just to, as long as it's like the full width, and then I can show about straightening it out and everything. Uh, I don't know what I've got, Jane. I don't know what I've got in here. I had a tidy, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Nicola. Oh, hold on, Nicola. Some, Is this a full... We use this. Yeah, have something yeah. taken out. That's. That, I think that's for it. I wanted a salvage to salvage piece. Is that yeah, a bit of cave too? here? <gasps> Go on then. So, to help with the iron on. You'll get your fabric. It'll be all neatly folded and beautifully packaged. But when you open it out, it's going to be crumpled and it's going to have a seam down the middle of it where it's folded in half on the bolt. You'll have two salvages. Um, so the first thing to do is to best press it and iron it out so that it's nice and smooth yes. and doesn't have any creases in it. You starch savvy, your best press, your laundry starch, whatever you use on the wrong side of your fabric. The best press and the starch savvy don't do it, but if you use laundry starch, sometimes if you iron it too quickly before it's soaked in, it can flake. So if you do it on the wrong side, it doesn't matter. It doesn't it matter. It just doesn't matter. So that's the first thing you're going to do. Now, there is a um, school of thought, I think. Is the right word. There are people that like to wash their fabrics first. That's up to you. If you want to do that, then, yeah, wash your fabrics and then do it. I don't. I'm always in too much of a hurry to get on and make the quilt. And there's a lot of people I know that feel the same way. And then they'll wash it after they've made it. And I that like way it, it then pulls it in a little in, bit yeah. and gives it that sort of antique like feel to it. If your fold crease doesn't want to iron out, it usually does with the best press, but if it doesn't, just give it a spritz with some ordinary water. That just relaxes the, the fibres and, and takes that really stubborn crease out. I tend to still use a dry iron when I'm pressing, even when I'm pressing my big pieces of fabric, just because the steam sometimes can distort it slightly and stretch your fabric again there's people that like to use steam and there's people that don't and it i'm not going to tell you you're right or wrong so you're going to get your piece of fabric now this has got pieces cut out of it and we won't worry about that so if i turn it around the other way and then you can see it straight i am going to line up my salvages together the edge of my salvage and i'm going to line it up so that it's hanging straight now if we look at the bottom fold here along this bottom piece. I want that lying straight. Now, if I put that edge to edge, can you see how that then doesn't hang straight? So I'm just sliding them along until I feel it's hanging straight. It's pulling a little bit because it's got the piece cut out of it, but that's hanging straight. Now, when I lie that flat on my mat, the cut edges aren't level. And you'll find that it might be a few threads. It might even be up to half an inch. And there's nothing you can do about that. The people in the shop that cut it for you can't do anything about it. It happens when it's put onto the bolt. If it's not folded straight onto the bolt, you're fighting a losing out. battle from then on. So, you know, don't be too critical of your fabric shop or your supplier because it's not there. Well, we're just working with what we've we're got. We're just doing it as it comes off the bolt and sometimes it's not on the bolt straight. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to straighten that edge up. So now I'm going to just flip this over this side because I've got all the fabric and the other side's got the cut off on that. So you'll line it up with the fold against your li horizontal line on your mat up against the um, vertical lines. Now, you don't want to cut off more than you need to, so just have it over one of the vertical lines, just slightly, a few threads over eighth of an inch, you know, around about there. You want to have the fold of the fabric facing you. This prevents the fabric moving when you're cutting it. And you'll line up your ruler with that straight edge on the, with the line on your, on your mat. So you've got your straight edge. And you want to cut it. Now you can fold it again. If you've only got a small mat, 
you can fold it in half again you can bring the folded edge up to the salvage and bring your fabric down again so you're cutting through four layers mm. now if you're going to start making this project and you're going to start by cutting all of your squares I suggest that you put a brand new blade in your cutter yes so that you've got a nice crisp fresh blade you're doing a lot of cutting and that's going to help you with the cutting you'll line your ruler up with your straight edge and you cut through those layers don't move your ruler just make sure that you've cut through all your your layers before you move your ruler okay so that's starting that's your starting edge so if you're right-handed you'll now flip that over so that your nice clean cut edge is on your left hand side yeah now if you're left-handed you'll have cut on the right hand side to straight to straighten your fabric yes and then you'll flip your fabric over to the right hand yes. side mm -hmm. yes and you're going to have to cut for your squares they're three inch squares so you'll want to cut a three inch strip so you will line your ruler now the three inch mark on your ruler up with that lovely straight edge that you've cut lining that edge up there and lining the fold up with one of your horizontal lines and then you know you're still square yeah that's the thing isn't it that yeah. lining up on the on the perpendicular and the horizontal yeah really now important. of course if you've got your stripology ruler whiz, you whiz, don't whiz, whiz, have whiz. to do any of that nope. because you'll line your you'll put your piece make sure your fabric is like hanging straight you put your piece of fabric down on the mat you put your stripology over the top you cut your first cut which straightens it and then you've washed three, three they inches up there. should be back in stock any day yeah um, and I'm very much looking forward to the stripologies being back because yeah. they've been out of stock now for some time. They just haven't been in. No. So you'll have cut your three inch strip now um, and then you want to cut your strip up into squares. And once you've cut your strip, that is when you can then trim the salvage off. And you'll just line that up again like you did before when you were cutting it straight straight edge along the line one of the lines on your mat there and your ruler against one of the the um, vertical lines there and if you feel that you know that's a little bit too much to waste you can always lift it and just pull it back a little bit and line that up again and you're just cutting that the salvages off there so you've got those out of the way because they're tightly woven and quite often they're white so they if you get those in your square, they're going to be a pain. And, and then you'll a just slight different consistency. Yeah, they? they're they're tight more. To, well, it's where they're fixed onto the loom, so they're tightly woven. They're not going to have any play in them, and also they've got holes in them and writing and all sorts of stuff. So that I mean, you don't some people want. save them. Some people save them yeah. because there are some salvages are really beautiful. Yeah, I've got some ones with hearts on and sewing machines and dogs and all sorts of things because they're just different. They're and they nice. make bags and whatnot yeah, out of them. But do. the key is, is that they are all the same yes, type, of the fabric. type yeah. of fabric. Yeah, they'll, yeah. Work, they'll work the same way. Yeah. So you just work along that strip now, cutting your three inch square. So three inches all the time. For the half square triangles, you need three and five eighths. Now, a three and five eighths is just one eighth more than three and a half. So you look for your three and a half mark on your ruler, and then you just bring it across one one eighth of a mark on on your ruler. Your ruler, your quilting ruler, your creative grids or any other quilting ruler, are usually marked in eighths. Your creative grids definitely is. Um, and you'll be able to see ruler? them. Yeah. Well, I've got an awful one which I quite like, but I do love the creative grids. Um, you're going to be cutting quite a few of those. So get a post-it note or something, a bit of tape. A bit of washi tape. Washi I've, tape I'm, that comes off easily. I'm and having some any... washi tape made just for us. Oh, we? Oh, how exciting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's the cat out the back, isn't it? So, yeah, that's because so it's, you can uh, put... it's going to be useful. If you can put your bit of tape on that 5 8 mark, it's there then. So every time you go to cut, you've got that visual 
note, if you like, on your ruler. It's also handy to have if you're working on a slightly different seam allowance yeah. or anything else on your sewing machine. If you were going to make this quilt smaller, if you were going to do one inch finished squares, you'd be cutting it at one and a half inch squares and then one and seven eighths for your half square triangles. Um, if you were going to cut it down, you could cut them down to two inch squares and then you just have, you'd have one and a half inch squares finished, but that would be an easy measurement, two inches yeah. and then two and five eighths yeah. for your half square triangles. And likewise, if you were going to go bigger, you could go five inch squares, which are your charm pack, but then your half square triangles, you'd only be able to use one half of your half square triangle. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to get your two like we're going to do now. Um, Kat says, I just love Jane's explanations. As someone who's gleaned all their quilting know-how off YouTube or on the job, chatting to people who know more than me, it's nice to have some of the basic things I never realised I should know. I think sometimes this is it. And, and for me, particularly, because I've been doing it for quite a long time, I think it's nice to go back to the basics and just enjoy the process of a, ba of a simple quilt. Yeah. The, the enjoyment of making it and you don't have to overthink it and you don't have to worry too much about seam matching and, and things like that. It just, it's a lovely process, it really is. And, and this would be a lovely quilt, as I say, to just take your sewing machine out with an extension lead if you don't want to hand sew, sit in the garden and make it. Why not Lots, with the bees yeah, around you? I mean, we've heard someone saying, it. oh, absolutely lovely, lovely hand stitch project. Yeah. Um, and Anne says that, she says, I must say, I find watching Jane, I learn something new every time. Oh, bless, that's lovely. So we're going to, I'm going to show you, I'll do a combination of both, but I'm going to show you now the half square triangle method. We've talked about this method several times, um, but you know, there may be people that are watching for the first time, so we're going to go slowly and follow it through. Um, I need, because I'm, I've done most of the quilt together and I'm just working on rows. So this is, I've done one row here together. Um, this is row 10. I've marked it because I know where it is, but I chose a row that would be quite interesting with lots of different things. So I've sewn my squares together and this is the row that's going to go into the quilt. Oh, it looks so interesting. So that it? looks quite like, mm, okay, but if you're following this lovely pattern, you can see it straight away. You can see where that is. This is row 10. So it's that one there and you can see you can follow it. It's it's beautifully laid out and it's so easy to follow. And it's got these lovely tick boxes at the side. That's the key, isn't it? That's that you brilliant. Can keep, you know, so you don't have to sort of sit there and do it all in one go. You could do a couple of rows, but because you've ticked them, you'll know where you are when you come to it in a couple of weeks or even next year when you think, oh, I've got that quilt I want to make. Which so ones did I make? How far did I get I? before I was inter rudely interrupted? Yeah, this is what happens. <laughs> Life, Life interrupts. gets in the way. So you're going to have two of your squares, a colour, and I've got um, a green and a white. But in the pattern, <coughs> Tracy tells you exactly how many you need. So in total, you're going to need 10 green and white. You're going to need nine green and black, one green and yellow, and one black and ye uh, five black and yellow. So you know the combinations that you're going to make. Now, obviously, when you're doing this method, you're going to get two of some, but that's okay. They can go in your stash for something else. Um, you know, it doesn't matter, does it, that you've got an extra half square triangle lurking around. It can always be used for something. So I put the fabrics right sides together, and I'm going to mark the diagonal line from corner to corner along here. Now on your um, Creative Grids ruler, you have also got your 45 degree line. So if you're a beginner and you're not really sure whether you're going in the right way, mm -hmm. line that 45 degree line up with the bottom of your square, making sure that the, tri the diagonal line then is in there from corner to corner. So you can slide that along as you need it. And that lines up beautifully. And you know then that you've, you've got the right diagonal and you're not going to make a, a mistake. So from marking with a, a fabric marker, angle your pen in towards your ruler so that you're right against that edge of that ruler. Sometimes when you put your pen against the edge like that, you've got the width of the nib 
away from the edge of the ruler. So that makes sure that you're right in against the edge, just angling it slightly towards the ruler with the pencil. And marking on a diagonal line, you're marking the biased edge of your fabric. Now, for people that aren't sure about what I mean by biased edge, that's where the fibres run in the opposite against each other. So you get a stretch with bias. And so I mark from the middle out to the corner to reduce that amount of stretching and movement of my fabric. It's just something I learned along the way. I find myself doing it. I find myself hearing you in my head as I do things. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, with the fibre tips and stuff like that, they're not going to move very much, but sometimes with a pencil, it can drag it. And so it just reduces the movement of the fabric. And I think one of the things with patchwork and quilting is the less you move your fabric, particularly when you're cutting, the more accurate you're going to be each yeah. time. Yeah. And we're going to sew a quarter of an inch either side of the triangle, uh, the triangle of the line. <laughs> on the triangle. On the triangle. I've got the quarter inch foot on here, which has got a little like blade through it. And it will work on these, but some machines, they don't like it. So if you haven't got a quarter of an inch foot or you've got a quarter of an inch foot with a guide, if you want to, you can take your um, square back and you can mark your quarter of an inch line. So you'd line the quarter of an inch mark of your ruler up against that middle one and you just mark the line along either side and then you'd know you've got a, a line to sew on so you know if you haven't got a quarter of an inch foot or your machine doesn't move the needle to the position this is another way of doing it so you've got a line to follow because some of us have only got the very basic machine that doesn't have any fiddly dandy bits on it fiddly dandy bits but yeah we do like a fiddly dandy bit around here i'm we not gonna it. lie Everyone loves a fiddly dandy bit, don't they? Yeah, definitely. And you can just go down one side. Well, you could if you've got your bobbin thread up. <coughs> I checked the bobbin, but of course didn't pull the thread up from the bottom. <laughs> oh, did you um, do it to check whether or not you were going to be playing bobbin chicken? Yeah, I just thought, oh, well, I'll just check that the, the thread's in there and I've got enough. <laughs> But then yes. didn't, um, pull the thread up. Are you? Are you? Have, do you know how to? Yeah, I'm okay. Are you sure? I think I am. We'll soon find out. Did you there put the little go. handle back down on it? Yeah. Got to lock it in place. Yeah. I'm learning so much with this machine. It's fabulous. There we go. Yeah. So, back to the drawing board. Yeah, as we were. As we were. Oh, you're so rudely interrupted. There we go. So I'm using the quarter inch foot now. The quarter of an inch foot might be slightly less than my mark, it might be slightly more. It doesn't really matter because it's going to be a consistent seam throughout my project. So I'm not going to worry if it's slightly outside of the line I've marked because um, it's going to be the same with all of them. Right, okay, so that consistency is the key here, isn't yeah. it? I love the clink of this when it comes. It's, it's a, a it, real like. It means <laughs> it, doesn't yeah. it? It's like, like right, right here I that. am. Boop. Yeah. So we've done either side of that mark line, and we're going to now cut along the marked line that we did. And we always cut from the bottom of the project away from ourselves. We always cut away for safety reasons. We don't want to be bringing a nice a blade that is sharper than a Stanley knife towards you no 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 you do not so we're going to press these with the seam underneath the green fabric because the green is darker and we don't really want it to show through and I am literally pressing it so I've pressed it along that stitch line and that's sort of like setting the seam sort of presses the thread more into the fabric and then I just lift the fabric and I take the iron and I'm pushing it down onto that seam I'm not moving it like this. Again, as I said, we're on a biased edge there. So any movement of that iron like that will stretch it. Obviously, if you've used your best press or your starch or whatever you want to use, that reduces that amount of movement in your fabric anyway yeah. and gives it stability. Did you trim all these squares back? The half yes. square triangle ones you did? Yeah, because they're going to be too big. Right. 
and it says that in the pattern so you oh, trim okay. them back to three inches and if you've got your um, handmade by Haley binding tool you're going to have your three inch square on there anyway nice 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 it's it's having all these little bits and bobs isn't yeah, it it's the it right is. tool for the job every time and then of course you can make your binding really easily because this is part of the binding tool yes I'm just trying to work out where we are for this because it doesn't say on there half square triangles I'm going to go back to using the ruler because I'm not familiar with that. So um, <clears throat> if you've got your ruler, you've got little ones up there as well. One here. We've got the square here. Something like your perfect five yes, is great would be for ideal. this. They're really handy little new rulers. It's got they your 45 degree line on there, which you will line up with the seam and your three inch mark. Now don't think, oh right, I'll line up the three inch mark with this edge down here because you're not absolutely certain that this edge here is straight. So just a little bit in, just so that you've got a few threads, probably an eighth of an inch-ish around there. And you can see, now that I've done that, that that piece there isn't straight, it comes down like that. So it's worth just taking the time just to do that. Just slide it up slightly so you've got a bit of fabric over the three inch mark either you know on both sides and you're going to trim up that way move that out of the way because then you're going to trim across the top always away from yourself if you've That's got a rotating the only cutting time mat that i would go across when i'm trimming I and even then I, I tend to step to one side yes to do it and I angle myself so that i'm yeah. positioned where I've got the, because you're using your body pressure, the weight of your body, if you like, to hold your ruler down and to press down with your rotary cutter. So if you're not, if you're against it, you're not going to get no. the effect that you need. Um, otherwise, get yourself a rotating cutting mat. Yeah. And then one of those things that you'll use time and time and time again. You will use that so much and it is really handy to have. I bought a cheap one and again, Buy cheap, buy twice, mm. uh, because yeah, they the, stick, don't they? And they don't rotate properly. They don't rotate, and also it was so thin that actually the circle bit in it caused a lump. Though, so the rotating circly base bit yeah. caused. Lump. So you you never actually cut truly straight because you were always cutting over a hill, yeah. effectively. Yeah. So you know that's why we stock the ones that we do. They're not the cheapest on the market, but they are good. They're yeah, really good quality. So we've got lovely straight edges there we're going to turn that around and we're going to line up our 45 degree line and then this time we are going to line the three inch mark up with the edges nice and this way it doesn't matter if your seams are a little bit wider than a quarter of an inch because you're trimming it down to a three yeah. inch square which is going to match your other squares beautifully I only need one, so I'm not going to trim that one down for the sake of demonstration purposes. So once you've cut all your squares, you're ready to go. Now you can sew them together in, I would, sew them together in pairs, so they get pairs together in fours, so the fours into eights, keep going. <laughs> just fours into eights and that's where the math well, stops <laughs> you get, you've, got, you've got 22 squares so you've got your two eights and then you've got a six so I'm only, I'm only Josh with yeah, you no Jane. Way. but yeah it's just it reduces the weight that you've got under your machine that will drag if you went right I'm going to sew that square to that square to that square to that square by the time you've got to 20, it'll be pulling and yeah. the weight of it, and you might end up with it not being straight. It might just pull it down a little bit, and it'll, you'll have to struggle with it going together. So, What I noticed when, because um, I was really worried about um, the quilt, you know, the quilt I did on, what day was it? Monday. Monday. With this, again, long, long lengths of straight line stitching. Yeah. But I just let the machine take it. Uh, rather than me interfering. As soon as you start fiddling and faffing about, yeah. you're pulling your, your fabric out of shape. Yeah. 
That's it. Your machine will sew straight. You might need to just hold it slightly to, particularly with a long piece, the weight of it might drag it slightly. So you yeah. just need to, you're not moving it, you're just holding it in place. You're, you're not guiding it. You're not making it go anywhere. You're just yeah. holding it steady, if you like. It's a bit like when you're driving, isn't it? You, you just move your wheel. You don't really move your wheel very much, but you're just keeping it steady. So I am going to do row, which row am I doing? I'm doing row nine. So what I did find because of I'm a little bit OCD, I had to make sure that all of the squares were in, weren't the same square next to each other. So what I would do <laughs> is I would lay a row out of the squares of the greens and then lay the next row out so that I knew at that point I hadn't got any next to each other and I just did it two rows at a time so it just helped me so that when I'd done like row one I got that I sewed that all together that was fine and then I did row two and I placed them all out to make sure there were no greens next the same green next to each other I sewed that together and then I left that out and I looked for the next row just because I personally didn't want to because I think that would have created a block of colour. Yeah. Which would have drawn your eye straight to it. I am trying to get hold of some more of the K facet quilt wall. So then you can put it up on yes, the wall and then you the can wall. you yeah. can check it and see it it's, and look it and it looks yeah. really nice. So I was working where am I? Row nine. Have we got an amount to show our colourway? Yes. Or am I ruining a big reveal? Well, Are you we sure? We can do it now. Was there a big reveal? Yeah. This is oh, half of it. This is the bottom half. This is the bee's bottom. Oh, I love the bee's bottom. So you've got a wing there and a bee's. But you can see how, you know, I've tried my best to keep the colours not yeah. against each other. And sometimes you get a bit of a block of sort of turquoises, but I think it gives it some nice... It just gives movement. it a little bit of movement. I yeah. really like that. Oh, those colours did work, Jane. Yeah, they're lovely, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are lovely. They're quite tranquil colours. And also that because we've gone, we've gone blue, bluey greens, haven't we? Which yes. of course set off the yellows. That's an absolute right. treat. So this is row ten. <clears throat> Let me just look where I am. Yes, that's the right way round for me. It might not look right way round for you on the camera. It's right way around. Now we see as you do. That's good. So I am going to put now. Then I had put these in order, but whether I've muddled them up in the transition, which is quite likely, uh, we might spend a little bit of time just working out colours next to each other. So I'm on row nine. I've got three colours here. So this is this end of the row. I'm going to put that turquoise there green now then I put the light green there and the darker green in that corner because I've got my half square triangle so if I'd have put that green there I wouldn't have been happy because the two greens are next to each other but that's just me you might like to do it shaded you might like to do it darks going oh, to lights oh oh and this is where you can have it have quite good fun with your fabrics because and you can lay it out you know and just have a look and see what it looks like and then you'll have the whites there and just overlapping them slightly. What am I doing here? Oh, I, have, I do need this one. Let's trim that down then. <laughs> I'm really sorry for you hear myself. I've just realised I haven't had any breakfast or anything yet. So and, your um, tummy gurgling. That's, yeah, really loudly. And I just suddenly thought, I don't know if that's going to be. toast this morning. I know, and I didn't, I didn't have I had, any yourself. No, I didn't have any myself. I, um, Natasha came in and she said, there's coffee and toast there for you on the side. And I got my head in the photo box at the time. And I said, oh, lovely, thank you. Came out and went to get my coffee. It wasn't just, I thought, oh, it'd be a lovely buttered toast. They've got chocolate spread on it. I was like, mmm, chocolate <laughs> in the I should have put honey on this morning, shouldn't I, given what we're doing? Yeah. Um, As I say, it's really awful working here. <laughs> yeah, well, no, because then I got called up by the fencing guy. 
and he wanted to. He oh wanted, yeah, so he just struck yeah. the tree. So I had a good old hike around the fields to uh, to check the fencing is going to be put in the right place. Um, Rona says looks great, and what you see in a oh, honeybee hive great, yeah. where the pollen is random, of course. Yes. Yeah. Oh. So I didn't need that one. I was looking at the wrong grow. So <laughs> we've got the black there. Two yellows, the yellow um, and black. Jane, you know our easy Two snips? Two blacks, yes. The squeezy easy snips. Yes. They they actually make the best snip um, um, pickers. Yes, I watched you doing that. I yes. didn't realise. Yeah. And, uh, and I saw somebody else using it, and I'm like, well, I, how have I, why have I not done that? Brilliant. So then I've got these squares here, and I have, again, just looking at them, let me move this across. That last square there will go on top of that one so I know where I am. And then I can just make sure, if I stand back a little bit, that gets it in the camera, that I haven't got two colours on top of each other. So that's what I was saying was, I sew that one row together and then I can just put the next lot of squares out so that I know where I'm going with my fabrics to ensure that I hadn't got two on top of each other. If it doesn't bother you, just stick them in a bag and pull one out in a random, you know, a random selection style, which I know some people do. They're quite happy if they've got two fabrics together. It doesn't worry them at I all. I do that. I quite... Yeah. I think because sometimes... Because random is the hardest thing... It is. It's one of the hardest things to do. emulate. So if you can find a way to make it truly random, yeah, you know, and you know that you're going to be someone that's going to worry about it, just honestly be truly random. It's, it's actually quite a good way to get over your fear of having fabrics, you know, and not knowing. These fabrics all work together. The colours work. So it doesn't matter. And actually having that, right, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to put my hand in, pull the fabric out, sew it to the next one. That's how I would do it. I'm going to worry about it. Because it I'll, can make it quite good fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, and, I, and I like that, and I do that a lot with stuff. Yeah. If I've got my leftover sort of two or two and a half inch scraps, I will just sew them as they come out the bag, end on end on end on end on end. Yeah. I kind of love doing that. It's quite good fun. Yeah. Right, I'm just going to go through, if you wanted to sew them by hand. Okay. If you're going to sew by hand, and I'm not talking about putting them over uh, papers or anything like this, this is traditional quilting, quilt, patchworking, hand sewing, patchworking, where you don't need to have a, t uh, you'll have a template, whether it's your ruler or whether you've actually got a template to draw around and you sew with a needle and thread, like you do EPP, but without the papers underneath. So if you want this for an um, evening project sitting outside or yeah or just, a sunshine project yeah, or whatever. Just going to sew them together, do a few at a time and enjoy the process. I have got that one on that edge. So this one is going to be underneath and this one's going to be on top and I'm going to sew the seam along there. Now when you're hand piecing you can do it exactly the same way as you would do, um, particularly for squares, as you would do it for um, machine piecing. So you just sew the line down. But you don't actually have to sew all the way along, but you can, particularly for this one, because you're sewing in rows. Mm. You'll just need to mark your seam allowance. So you'll need to mark your quarter of an inch. And I would mark it all around the square on all on you know all your squares or if you've lined up if you've laid your squares out and you know which ones you're going to sew on top of each one you don't have to do it on all of them you can do it on every other one so you've got your quarter of an inch there and you'll place those right sides together I'm using the Orofil thread, the 50 weight thread, which is a nice weight of thread to use. Oh, which colour did you go for, Jane? I just took the, oh, you just took off there. there. Again, neutral is, is perfectly fine. But Jane, what colour would you have got if you had to go for the Orofil's behind? Oh, well, it would be the Macaw, wouldn't it? Yeah. This one. 
or maybe the lighter one but definitely those threads when you come to quilt it beautiful Very nice. the macaw yeah again they are on a by th three by, by three is it by two by get two get the third, third half, half price. price i think that's still running i have to ask sj um length of thread from your finger to your elbow don't have it any longer than that because it's going to tangle always thread your needle from the end that came off your spool rather than the end that you cut because your thread is, twi is, twist is twisted as it goes onto the machine, onto the spool, if you go from the end that you've cut, you're going against the thread and it, that's another thing that can cause it to oh, twist. Oh, okay. Um, we've got Thread Magic here. I love Thread Magic. Which is a thread conditioner. It's got grooves in it there. It's a lovely, um, like, waxy thing because I use beeswax, ironically. I've got a block of beeswax. And you just run your thread through that and it conditions your thread and it and it just coats the thread slightly you'll run it through a couple of times and then just run your fingers down it just to take off any excess and then rub that into your fingers because that's conditions your fingers as well and then um that will protect your thread help it go through your fabric nicely and and again prevent any tangling mm. Mm -hmm. You no, I use it all the time. Um, um, I've got one of the little cubes because you can get a combi one. Yes. I don't know if you've got that one there where you've got the round, the big round one, which I keep in my stash, and then the little square one. I've got because you squares. can, yeah, Let's do you want to just show it on a close up? So the little cubes you can attach onto your sewing machine and have your thread run through it on its way through yeah, the sewing so machine. It, on this machine, it would probably attach here. Yeah so that that piece of thread that then comes down to go into the needle would be running through mm. that thread conditioner all the time. It will change the sound of your machine slightly and you can get a duo, but actually that little cube, I stick onto my EPP pouch where I keep all my EPP and yeah. I, I coat every, yeah. every strand. You can get the refills there. You've got two pieces just for your sewing machine. We've got it just on its own, which is ideal for hand sewing. And then we've got the combination. But they last. I mean, gosh, I did Emily and an entire EPP quilt and I, I've barely, barely gone through any. And there, um, it's a synthetic beeswax, really. So if you're a vegan and you don't agree with using beeswax, you can use the thread magic and you get yeah. the same effect. So I've just put an, a knot at the end of my thread like I would do normally. And I am going to start sewing, if we go close up, I'm going to start sewing there where those two lines join. You can see that. And I am going to sew a stitch. And then I'm going to go back over that stitch in that corner. Just a couple of times, just over itself. And then I'm going to go just along and I will do just a couple of back stitches. So that's along that line. So a couple of back stitches. And then I'll do just a straightforward running stitch. Keeping my stitches fairly small. We don't want great big stitches. Oh, so you don't you do not do back stitch all the way down. You just no. do it to secure the thread. Just a running stitch. And then I'll get to the middle and I'll probably do three back stitches or even two. Just in the middle bit. And you'll be surprised with this method how quickly you can sew your pieces together. So that's just a running stitch then. So you can see on there, I've gone over a couple of times there where the knot was. Three back stitches, running stitch, three back stitches, and then I'm running stitch again till I get to the end. And again, it's a probably about three back stitches. Nice even stitches if you can, but don't, you know, nobody's going to see these stitches, so it doesn't matter if they're a little bit uneven. And then I get to that corner and I'll just, again, I'll just go over a couple of times on the same stitch and then just run my thread through that last stitch to make a knot. And snip that off. So that's what it looks like when you hand stitch. 
If I then open that out, press the seams to one side, that's how it looks very nice. Seams. So it doesn't take very long to hand stitch. And what I'll do is I'll show you as well when I come to join the rows together, I'll do the first through. So I'll show you how to, to hand stitch through seams because that's slightly different from when you machine stitch. So for machine stitching, I am just going to now just chain piece these, two, these pairs together, keeping them in the um, order that I've got them laid out. So I'm starting from right down to left. You can start whichever way you want to, really. Let's just move this out of the way. So I'm going to chain piece these into pairs. So just putting them right sides together, lining the edge up. Be careful with this bumbleberries because it's very difficult to tell the right side from the wrong side. Mm. Um, but one side and the wrong side is slightly rougher and you can see it in some lights. So just making sure that I've got my half square triangles facing the right way, which I hadn't on that one. It needs to go around that way. That's it. Because there's nothing worse if you've got all your row together and halfway along the row, you've got the wrong way. Got it the wrong way around. <coughs> you have to unpick it. That's what I would do. <laughs> it's so easy to do. And, it, and, you know, as I say, you can get a little bit cross-eyed with where you are, which is why having the tick boxes next to it is always handy. Genius, isn't it? Absolute yeah. genius, this pattern. I love and it. another visual way of doing it is if you've got a highlighter pen, you can just run your highlighter pen through the one that you've done. And again, that instantly you can see where you are. I know people that do that, again, like Claire with her cross uh, crochet patterns and cross-stitch patterns, just to highlight a pen through the row that you've done or the bit that you've done. So I'm just sewing these together into pairs. It doesn't take long to do, and a row, you can do a row quite quickly when you're doing it on the machine. <coughs> I think the, the, the thing that takes the most time on this quilt is the actual cutting out. You see, I love cutting. Yeah. I really love cutting. Well, with so your stripology, would, really, yeah. you'll do it a lot quicker. Yeah because you can cut multiple squares all in one go. <coughs> oh, Karen's joined us. She says, morning, Tash and Jane, just back from the hairdressers. Yay! I'm going this up tonight. Are you? Yes. Just in time wait. to watch a bit of witchiness. <laughs> <laughs> She's been hand stitchy witching today. Did you take your hand stitch into the hairdressers with you, Karen? I've I... been known to do that when, I've been, when I used to have my hair coloured. I yeah. take hand stitching with me yeah, to yeah, the hairdressers. Yeah. So what I was doing when I was doing mine is I've got these now in the order that they are. Now it's going from left to right. So I would snip two, snip them apart. Now then, I've got the seam on this row going that way. So on this row, I want the seams to go the other way. So I'm going to, I'm just finger pressing these seams at this point. Pressing those that way and pressing those ones that way. I'm now just double checking because I'm obsessive that they're still in the right order. Place those right sides together and sew those two to make the four. Jane, how many um, sides of printing is this pattern? Um, four. Yeah, it is four, isn't it? No, five. There's five, five. sides. So snip every other one and then snip those two together. Pressing the seam so it's going that way just because this row is going this, the other way and this helps me join the rows together because you can nestle the seams. If you do the one row one way and the row, other row the other way, it just helps. Oh, 
she's going to look amazing. It's a beautiful quilt. It's nice and methodical. If you're a beginner, it's easy to follow. It's not complicated. And it's actually, you know, it's quite soothing to do because it's methodical. There's no sort of, there's no stress involved in it, worrying about matching points and lining up seams and stuff like that. It's quite a... I guess the thing is there are so many points and what have you in, in there. No, no one's going to notice if it's a bit out. No. And because you'll have taken your time with your cutting, your squares are, are pretty accurate. You know, they're, they're going to be accurate. They're going to go together beautifully. And then you've got the last two here. You would have, if you hadn't done those two, the, you would have another pair. So you would have an odd two. So you've got the four and then you would just add that on. As I say, you, you do just some six into eights and then together and then you've got that odd one on the end. <clears throat> so now I've got my rows like this. I'm going to start again, but I'm now working from right to left. So again, I'll just snip those two, put them together, check the um, order that they're going in. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? It's just, just making methodical. sure that you've got them in the right order. Put them together. Oh no, Karen took a book. Nearly took, took her embroidery. Yeah. Yes, that's something else, isn't it? It's just having that little bit of time to yourself and you can just <laughs> relax while you... She says, I nearly took my embroidery, but last time I did that, I ended up giving it away while I was there. What? How far is it finished or part finished? This is it, isn't it? And people see what you're doing and they're like, oh, what are you doing? When I was at... Um, college in Birmingham I used to take my knitting with me to do on the train because mm. it was a sort of 40 minute train yeah. journey particularly if I got the train that stopped at every station and the conversations I had with strangers because I was knitting and they'd always start chatting everyone and I used to, to know. talk yeah and I used to talk to some really interesting people just because I was knitting and I suppose I was young person to be knitting it's considered a, <laughs> an older lady's occupation you know i was 18 when i was a young college. whippersnapper and they'd be like oh what are you knitting now you see margaret made all of her face coverings by hand she used a john james size 10 which is what i supplied when i did the kits for the yeah. the teacup the EPP teacups yeah i like a john james embroidery size 9 when i'm high, when yeah. i'm hand stitching um and um yeah, and, and she said, and with the Orifil 80, and she said her stitching is now really neat. Uh, Karen, yeah, it was finished. She said it was only a little heart. Yeah, but these things can take time. Yes. I used to take my EPP everywhere when I was doing Emily's blanket. Um, I took my EPP everywhere with me, especially yeah. for long hospital appointments or anything I like that. I used to take um, cross stitch when the boys were swimming. I'd always have cross stitch in the car, sitting, waiting for half an hour while they were in the swimming pool or whatever always nice to have some something. something I can't sit and do nothing no and then I'm going to just add those two that I've hand stitched onto the end of there so there's nothing to stop you doing a combination of hand stitch and machine stitch so if you wanted to hand stitch the rows together but didn't feel you wanted to ha to hand stitch the squares together into yeah. rows but then didn't feel you wanted to hand stitch the rows because it's a great big long piece mm. there's nothing to stop you machine stitching it Oh, okay, well, that's you know, it right. doesn't, they're not exclusive. They're not mutually exclusive, yeah. You're using a, a quarter of an inch seam each time. They're going to fit together. So I finger pressed all of those seams, but now I've got the row together. I'll take it to the ironing mat, board, whatever you're using, and I will just press them then. Jane, I had to use my ironing board the other day. Did you find it really strange? It was really spongy. 
bungee. <laughs> yeah. We've got so spoilt with our House of Alistair yeah. pressing mats. Yeah. Really spoilt. I and get it, quite frustrated with mine because it doesn't iron as flat. Yeah. When you're doing a, a big piece, like when I've done a quilt top together and I'm like, oh, just go flatter. <laughs> <laughs> flat, please. So I'm just making sure that all of those seams are... I'm, I'm giving it a slight pull, but I'm not stretching it. If I pulled it too much, you can see that stretches it. Just pulling it slightly, just so that I know that I've got a flat seam on the other side. And then if you want to, you can just turn it over and press it again if you felt the need. So you're just lining up now, and because we've pressed one seam one way and one the other, you're lining up your seams. Now, if you wanted to hand stitch, your rows together when you get to, I'm going to start and I'm going to just start just before because it's the end of the row I just want it to hold a little bit better so I'm just going to start before I where I would start normally when I'm sewing the squares together and it's doing exactly the same thing you've got that mark line that you're following a couple of stitches on the spot three back stitches running stitches to about the middle we're not going to get too upset whether it's exactly in the middle or not so two or three back stitches in that part there just here trying to think when i last hand stitched anything like a prussian or anything like that i think it must be Eight years ago, over eight years ago. Yeah. I think we get so spoiled with our machines. We do. And, you know, you're a little bit like me in so much that we have a time limit on what we're doing. Mm. And we don't have much... I was going to say social sewing. That's the wrong word. But sewing for ourselves because we're doing... Well, eight years ago was shows and before things. Freddie was even born. Yeah. So now I've got to where the seams meet. I'm going to move that back seam out of the way. And should we go close up? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to move that back seam there because we've got the seams there. They're locked together like they would be if I was joining them. I'm moving that back seam out of the way. And then I'm going to carry on sewing up to that point. I can see where the, where the seam is by my marking, just a couple of back stitches. And I get to that point there, just go over that one again. I'm going to take my needle to the back of the stitch there where the seam is. And I'm going to sew through the seam. So I'm going through the seam with my needle. Can't see it, can we? So it's going through the seam. If I angle that that way, you can see I'm just going through the seam. So I'm not sewing the seam down. And then I'll come back to the front and I'll bring my needle through right close to that seam there and bring that through close to the seam on this side. So I'm not sewn through the seam. So I've come from the back through to the front into that seam and then I'll go back through that seam to that side and then I'll just do that once more so I go back to the back of the cloth through my seam and then back into the front and then I'll carry on sewing along So those seams aren't, th those seams there, they're not sewn down, they're loose. Oh, okay. It just reduces the bulkiness of it when you're hand sewing, because otherwise you've got to sew through like four layers by yeah. hand, which is quite strange, uh, particularly Well, we've for got a, big a couple quilt. of things like grippets, which really help for hand sewing. Yes, they do. Um, and then also my personal favourite are the little... Um, thimble patches oh, 
forgotten what they're called now. The they're thimblets. the thimblets. The th no, they're the th uh, they're the colonial um, thimble pads. Yes, they're fab. Yeah, they are. Um, and it, they just they just make such a difference because otherwise you end up with that sore patch, don't you? Yes. In fact, I didn't have one yesterday when I was stitching the bag handles down. Well, you and end up course, like me and you don't need a thimble because you've sewn so much that the skin on this finger here is so hard, it acts like a thimble anyway. Well, no, I was being particularly stupid and wondering why my needle wouldn't go through. Of course, I was trying to push it through the metal and instead push it through my finger. Not nice. No, no, no. Right, so I'm going to go back to machine now because we want to get this together. So if you wanted to, you could place a pin along each part that you've where the, the seams meet, but because we've gone one way and one and the other way, they naturally lock into each other. So it's quite straightforward to just sew along. Just feeling where it is in there. And it's always good to double check as well that you're sewing the right pieces together. Because you're sewing them together in pairs it would be very easy to sew the bottom to the top instead of the middle two. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Again, it's a long seam to undo. Lois on her way around the country on her on her little on her little trip around. Yeah, she'd been to Bury St Edmunds the other day, I'd seen yeah. her post. She'd been and to... my auntie used to live in Bury St Edmunds, oh, right. well, near Bury St Edmunds, and we used to go quite often. And there was a beautiful um, bead shop, and that was when I was into making jewellery and stuff. And I always liked to go to the bead shop. Can we go to the bead shop? <laughs> and they had a lovely tea rooms as well, and you went upstairs. It was all oldie worldy, and you went upstairs, and they used to do really nice cake. I'd love to go to Bury, to Bury St Edmunds. It's, lovely. it's beautiful that way around there. Um, that was just after some good independent shops in the local area. She wasn't a fan of Kings Lynn. Um, and Julia's just saying Stamford. They yeah, the tea shops there, which is lovely. But also there's a bakery there. And I don't know if it's open, but it does the most incredible mint rocky road which is just phenomenal. In fact, <laughs> I'll be honest, my friend Emma Clare, when we used to live near Stamford, she got on the train from Glasgow, came all the way down to just have afternoon tea with this <laughs> didn't they? Go on the train and go all the way back home again. <laughs> Brilliant. I love that. I That's love what my friends do for cake. It's yeah. fine. That's what anybody should do for cake. Right. So once you've got your rows together, you're going to press them open. Well, not press the seams open, but press the row open. So just pressing it and just taking your time and gently pressing it so that you've got all your seams nice and crisp pushing them back but not pushing them too far so it exposes your stitches which it shouldn't do if your tension's right on your machine So you'll have two rows sewn together and then you'll sew the two rows together into fours. I know it's the right way around. I've sewn it the wrong way. Where am I? I don't even know what day it is. There we are. It's that way. Yes, that's right. It's that way. And so you'll end up with um, rows of four. No, that's not a row of four. That's the four half piece end up with rows of four which you then um, sew together into rows of eight and before you know it you will have a 
complete bee quilt, which hasn't taken too long <clears throat> to join together because once you've got your rows done, amazing, it sews together quite quickly. That is and amazing. again, you know, it's the monotony of it is quite relaxing. Yeah, because you get into a lull. You get you? Into, into a, a lovely rhythm and you end up with a beautiful <gasps> bee. Oh, look I there can't she. see him properly there, but he, you could she. get an idea. I don't know why we always think bees are he's, don't we? But particularly I guess because there's bees. only one queen bee, isn't there? Yes, I suppose so. And you don't see her, do you? She's busy making babies. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say antisocial, but she's yeah. busy. She's a busy bee. Busy bee. So... Oh, it's Jane, really lovely, yeah. and um, in the pattern, um, and you probably can't see it on from the camera, but in the pattern, um, Tracy has embroidered antennae and carried on the legs slightly, and on her, she's used a feather stitch from a machine, and you can just it's oh, just on. here and here, just where and where. You can just uh, you probably can't get it on camera, but she's just done it there oh beautiful so you could do a little satin stitch or you could hand hand sew a chain stitch whatever nice. you wanted but the the on the instructions if we go close up on that Tasha, you can see there oh the yeah, embroidered yeah, yeah bits which you can do before you quilt it or after you quilt it whichever you want to do i think um, tracy's done it after she's quilted it because it looks like it's over the top of the quilting we've got um and it's a beautiful cross hatch quilted right. which is so easy to do with the squares because you're just following the diagonal yeah perfect so you don't even have to mark it you just follow the seams we've the got diagonal. dmc embroidery threads as well if you want to do it so that it's yeah it's, it's a nice thick one um easy and do it to by see. hand and i think a yeah. nice little chain stitch would show it up I mean, you can see traces when you get close to it, but from a distance, you can't see it. Gorgeous. Just so, gorgeous. Yeah. Have a go at it. It's lovely. And, you know, experiment with it. Make it smaller, make it bigger, see how we get on. And, um, oh, okay, here we go. So the stripology rulers are expected next week. Oh, good. Day to be, day to TBC. Um, also, also, oh, so I would just like to say, um, a massive thank you to Tracy for trusting us with her pattern. You yes. know, it's it's one of those things. These, when you're a designer, these are yeah, so your these, babies. They and like are your she babies. Said, you know, that's yeah. her first pattern. Yeah, and she's doing she's a stag. I know. I saw that in the writer book. I was like, oh, that'll be good. It's just beautiful and simple, but effective. And sometimes that's Best all you are. need. That's yeah, all you need. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. We are going to say goodbye then. Um, next Monday, of course, is the last Monday of the month, which means it is yes. Mr. John, John Carl Morgan, Morgan with um, block two of the Flying Dales. Lovely. Not only that, but he is also bringing his lick bag. Mm. Oh, yes. <laughs> ah, that'll be interesting. Him and um, Becky Alexander Frost have teamed up and they have come up with some incredible designs for bags over the next few months. Lovely. And um, and this is because his tag has kind of become um, don't lick don't lick anyone. Yeah, that's right. He says that, doesn't he, at the yeah. end of each podcast? Don't lick anyone. Don't lick anybody. So um, so this is now his lick bag. So that's what we will be looking at on Monday. Uh, remember, all of the Half Metre Heavens will be going live at midnight tonight. We are limited on quite a few of them this week. Um, but because of that, I did bring you beautiful art gallery fabric gift yes, boxes. Ah, but again, I... You've I, not many, is there? There aren't many. I was, again, restricted with those just because I managed... Well, I mean, you've seen. I've already taken £6 off the price, so I did get them at a good price for you. Uh, yeah. They're under £70 for 10 yards. 10 yards, are they? No, no 10 five yards. Five ten yards, half. 10 half-yard pieces. And they are yards, so they'll be 18 inches. They won't be our metric yards, which are 20 inches. Because it's American. Our metric yards. Yeah. <laughs> they <They're not laughs> will not be our metric, metric yards. Me they're our imperial <laughs> metres, actually. The other way around, we do imperial metres. Yeah. Oh, we'll get there in the end. We'll understand in yeah. the end. Um, Lo is off to Stamford. Lovely. Uh, Have a lovely day, Lo. She feels that she needs some cake. I don't know if they're open, but they were. They were just on the hill, just at the top of the hill before you go down towards the river, opposite what used to be the Cozy Club. 
Oh, I bet that's lovely then. Sit, get a piece of cake and sit by the river. Yeah, go and sit down on, um, yeah, and feed the ducks. Yeah. So it's going to feed the ducks down by there. Um, but yeah, if you as you head up, it, it's on it's on the corner, um, which is rather lovely. I haven't been to Stanford for ages, oh, but I don't know if it's, it's there, there. But they did do the most amazing mint chocolatey thing, which was fabulous. There we go. Um, Pattern is showing upside down. Oh, well, that's all right. We're all, we're all good. We're all good. Um, but thank you, everybody. Um, Have a lovely rest of your day. Yeah, absolutely. Stay safe. Do, do, do. And we will see you on Monday with that man, Mr. John Carl Morgan. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. And as John would say, don't lick anybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>